Hi, my name's Sarah. Um, this is my gallery, specialising in linen works, mainly because I love using linen. I love the tactile feeling of it. Um, I've been quilting for 35 years plus. Um, I started off using just the cottons and buying cottons and then about 10 or 15 years ago I started using linen and I've fallen in love with it so much that I, that's all that's in my fabric stash now. I'm not bothered whether the, the points match or the seams lie flat because it gives it its own voice especially with when you're quilting it and it seems to accept the stitches nicer than cotton for me um, you can weave it in and out and it just creates a nice tactile piece of work uh, this piece is called Harvest um, and it uses ray stitch linen um, they've got a range of 16 colours which I wanted to put uniquely in this this particular piece is called Haiku. Um, I've always wanted to write a poem, or a haiku poem, which is made up of five, seven and five. But I am terrible at writing. I can't, I start with a pen on the paper and I think, oh, what do I do? So I thought, why not do it in fabric? So there's my five, my seven and my five. And at the end, I've actually got a purple full stop. So. People have asked me what what words are they or what is the is the poem, but to me you just make up your own poem and they're just little individual pieces of fabric that I really wanted to put in there. Even though I work in linen, uh, this particular piece is sateen. It was hand dyed by Heidi Stools Weber. I put it together with individual little pieces that I really wanted to keep and I really like and I added the white. All the rest came from one piece of cloth. It took me a long while to actually get round to cutting it and putting it together but it took me a good three years to quilt because it's all quilted in silk um, and I always put two red stitches in my hand pieces just as my signature. Somebody gave me a spool of red thread um, and I didn't want to use all of it so I just used two stitches in all my hand pieces. Um, the stitching is, is quirky, it's wonky. This particular down here, you don't look too closely because I was quilting it while I was watching Bonkerton, which is Bridgerton, really. But that's when the guy took his kit off. So my stitches went a bit wonky. When we, we love going on car journeys and I, really fiddle with my hands. I have to do something with my hands and looking out the window. So I always do some hand quilting in the car. So I normally make a block, a roundabout log cabin block, but not as structured as a log cabin. So these are the blocks and I take them in the car and I quilt them. Um, and I love dense quilting. And I also love leaving all the dots on the back because I feel as though it's the texture and it shows my work and it shows what a big effort is to, uh, to quilt it through. Uh, this quilt is called Hemisphere. Uh, it was named by my grandchildren Hemisphere and I still can't figure out why but it was just a word that they came out with. Um, this is a total mistake of a quilt. I put together the pattern um, and wrote the pattern in my head and I decided the sizes and I sketched it out and it's twice the size that it planned on um, which is huge it wasn't supposed to be this big therefore I ran out of fabric so I thought well, do I start again do I? I thought no blow it I'm gonna keep with it so this is extra fabric because I ran out of this fabric and that is extra because I ran out of that fabric. But then I thought, you know what, this, that's become the history of the quilt. And I really love it because it's, I look at that and I'm thinking, well, what a donut. What a donut of making it so big. I'm hopeless at measurements. I'm married to an engineering draftsman and I can't tell you how long 12 inches are. Yeah. Yeah. This quilt came about from a paper collage 
It is actually from a t-shirt advert at the back of a magazine that you would get through your letterbox that you would normally throw out in the bin. But I was flicking through it before I chucked it out and at the back there was a list of all the colours of your t-shirts that you could order from this certain company. So I thought I loved those colours because I would never normally use them. So I ripped the piece of paper out, folded it up randomly, cut off the folds and then I cherry picked the pieces and I put this together using the colours that those are the t-shirts that you can buy. Um, which I thought was a great design element if people are constantly saying, well, I don't know how to use colour, just have a look in magazines. Somebody else has done the donkey work. Somebody else has put those colours together. All you've got to do is go to the coffee shop, grab a coffee, go to your fabric store and buy the relevant fabric. And it all goes together. This actually is on the cover of my book, From Collage to Quilt. It was published this year, 2022, and it's available on my website, sarahibbertquilts.com. This is a, another quilt from my book. Um, this is the one that I had a little bit of a Barney with my husband. Uh, he's an engineering draftsman. I haven't got a clue about sizes and you know measurements and things. I put the piece together literally with a square which was a bit strange to put together because it was quite wonky but anyway, I put it together, quilted it, then I wanted to put the bias binding circles on top. I hadn't got a clue how to work out my measurements so I asked my dear husband how do I measure the circle and he said well it's pi Sarah, just easy, it's pi. I was obviously off school that day because I hadn't got a clue so in the end he just he wouldn't help me, so I got a piece of string and I literally did it with a piece of string yeah. and I'm pleased I did it. <laughs> These two quilts are called Serendipity. Um, Serendipity 1 and Serendipity 2. Um, this quilt was just a random... I've collected very much with my collage papers, I've collected a lot of fabric and I stashed them away and I just wanted to use every single bit I've collected so I put this one together and this is the one that actually was the first quilt that was accepted into QuiltCon that got me into QuiltCon which I love every year. I made a following year which this also was accepted into QuiltCon but the, what I really wanted I wanted a much calmer palette and I also wanted to incorporate two pieces of my father's artwork. Unfortunately my father passed away 16 years ago and I do miss him so he hasn't really seen much of the journey of my quilting lately. Um, but there's a piece of his work that I printed out onto fabric and that is incorporated in it. Okay. So he's part of that. Thank you very much indeed for listening to my story of the gallery that I had at Festival of Quilts in uh, Birmingham. The final piece I want to talk to you about is Frank. This is named Frank because of Frank Lloyd Wright. I've loved his architecture and his ethos. Maybe not his um, chasing women bit, but um, I've always loved Frank Lloyd Wright. He loved Japanese art and Japanese uh, textiles and the, the whole atmosphere of Japan. And I picked this particular piece of indigo fabric up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, which, from a Japanese designer and I put it together with neutral threads. I machine quilted just a simple grid but I've hand quilted the outline of Guggenheim and I put the red signature of Frank Lloyd Wright which is his red square which he puts on all his buildings. So thank you very much indeed for listening and hearing part of my journey. And if you need to know any more about me, please do drop me a line. Um, you'll find my email on my website, sarahhibbertquilts.com. And thank you very much indeed.